For over 40 years, the Toyota Camry has consistently been America's best-selling mainstream family sedan. Even as the industry continues to move toward SUVs and electrification, it hasn't stopped Toyota from offering its best Camry ever, which this generation, as you guys know, was introduced back in 2018. It's now in its eighth generation. Now, last year, Toyota introduced a couple of significant overhauls to the Camry lineup, including back in 2020, the sportiest Camry ever, the Camry TRD. Now, as you you guys know TRD stands for Toyota Racing Development and while it's not necessarily a GR Camry that we were kind of hoping for this week as you can see Toyota has loaned me the latest 2022 Camry TRD in this beautiful new Calvary blue exterior color as you guys know the Camry continues to be the only mainstream family sedan still offered with a naturally aspirated V6 and with the upgrades to the suspension steering exhaust and exterior styling the Camry TRD certainly looks the part in being the sportiest Camry that Toyota has ever offered so this week we're going to spend some time with this vehicle we're going to retest it we're going to live with it at the end of this review, I want to find out if you guys are looking for a mainstream family sedan, how does the latest Camry TRD stack up? Stay tuned to find out. Hey guys, I want to interrupt this review to give a brief shout out to the sponsor of this video, Keeps. Now what exactly is Keeps? Well, they're an online subscription service that provides doctor recommended hair loss treatment plans. Because they are online, they offer 24 seven support and proven results. I should know because I've been using Keeps for well over two years and let me tell you, it's one of the best products out there that allows you to keep the hair that you still have left on your head. The other great thing about it for me is the fact that it's so easy to fit into your daily routine. Every day I take this really small pill once in the morning and then twice a day, once in the morning, once at night, I use this mousse in my hair and like I said, it's just super easy to fit into your daily life. So what are you waiting for guys? Hair loss stops now with Keeps and in order to save up to 50% off of your first order, be sure to go to www.keeps.com forward slash redline or you can simply just click in the link in the description below. And now let's get back to the video. So I wanna start this video by showing you guys what's underneath the hood. As I mentioned earlier, all of the Camry's competitors have moved on to a forced induction, a turbocharged four cylinder, whereas Toyota still continues to offer its tried and true naturally aspirated V6. Now, if you guys are pretty familiar with Toyota engines, this is a good engine. It's the company's 3.5 liter naturally aspirated direct injection. It's actually got direct and port injection, double over cam V6 with variable valve timing. We've known this engine since 2006. I believe that's when the Toyota first put this engine in the Camry. It's been massaged, of course, over the years. It now makes 301 horsepower and 267 pound-feet of torque. Those numbers are unchanged in the TRD versus a, an XSE or an XLE Camry. Uh, all V6 Camrys continue to be only front wheel drive. Toyota does offer all wheel drive only on the four cylinder Camry, which I think is a huge mistake. They should have offered it on those six. It all goes out through an eight speed torque converter automatic. That is a Toyota designed transmission. It gets no software updates or hardware updates considering this is the sportier option. Fuel economy is also rated at 22 in the city, 31 on the highway. Decent numbers, especially for a six cylinder, but just know something like the Camry Hybrid gets roughly twice that MPG. This engine thankfully will at least run on regular grade gas. Toyota doesn't quote a zero to 60 time, but we've got our equipment this time. We're gonna strap it to it and see what we can get. I'm gonna say around the six second mark. Uh, and uh, the Camry TRD is on the heavier side because it's got that uh, heavy V6 over the front axle. This one here weighs in at just over 3,500 pounds. But shutting the hood, which you guys noticed, it was supported by a prop rod. There was a time where Toyota used to offer uh, struts on the six cylinder Camry. Let's go ahead and talk about the styling. Now, Toyota did update the Camry's front fascia back in 2021, and you can see the TRD kind of wears all of that. This car starts life as an SE Camry, not necessarily an XSE Camry, which is where I have my issue with the TRD. I would rather actually go for an XSE because if you look at the front end, the headlights on this Camry. Now, all Camrys come standard with full LED headlights, LED LED low and high beams and uh, turn signals. No fog lights are available on any Camrys, but you can see unlike the V6 XSE and XLE, these are the cheaper style headlights. You can see you've got a projector, low and high beams, and just an incandescent turn signal in the center there. Um, if you guys go for the higher trims, you'll actually have a, a full LED turn signal with an LED daytime running light. That is actually the LED running light. It just makes the headlight come on on a low uh, intensity, which I think looks makes the car look a little bit cheap. Down here, you can see there are some fake vents 
vents with the gloss black. The grille on the X or in the TRD is the same one that you get on the XSE and the SE. You can see it's certainly odd looking at times, although I do think this grill looks better versus what you find on the XLE. You can see some of these vents here are functional along with this. This houses the sensor for the radar cruise control. I just don't like how this portion here comes out past the Toyota emblem. It just makes the front end look a little bit flump, frumpy. But what the TRD does give you is this really nice uh, front, uh, front bumper uh, skirt, which definitely makes it look a little bit more aggressive. They've also lowered the Camry a tad because of that TRD sport suspension, which does give this car a more aggressive looking stance. But I believe this car has around 5.7 inches of ground clearance, which is pretty typical for a family sedan. Now, because of the uh, front and rear exterior bumpers, which are more aggressive on this car, Toyota did increase the overall length of this Camry by about an inch or two. It's rated at, or it's measured at 194.6 inches long. Its wheelbase is around 112 inches long. Remember, this is built off of Toyota's TNGA architecture uh, that it shares with everything else in this segment. Now, moving over here to the wheels, you can see the TRD comes with its own specific 19 inch wheel with this kind of matte black finish. The wheels look good, but they are a pain in the butt to keep clean and they don't look good when they're really dirty. Um, I, I kind of wish the Toyota offered like a different finish on the wheel, but you can see uh, the tires are 235 with tires on 40 series uh, rubber on a 19 inch wheel. Uh, you can also add in a summer tire if you'd like. This is the only Camry to offer a summer tire. You can see also the brakes on the TRD are upgraded. These are 12 inch rotors with uh, twin piston red painted calipers. Uh, so they are about an inch larger versus other Camry models, which should help give us a little bit better stopping power. I'll talk about that later on the drive. You can see the TRD also includes uh, LED turn signals in the mirror, black mirrors, and then you can also get this two-tone roof, which is included. Although if you're looking for the Pano sunroof, which comes standard on the other V6 Camrys, it's not available on the TRD. You can't even get a sunroof, but at least you do get the black painted roof. It certainly looks good with this new color, which I believe they call Calvary blue for 2022. And then looking over at the rear, it certainly looks very very aggressive. I have to say, this is one of the best looking Camrys Toyota's ever done. I really like the spoiler that the TRD gives you. You can see it's a pedestal style spoiler. It actually doesn't even get in the way when you're uh, behind the wheel. Uh, and you can see here the badges have been blacked out with the Toyota logo. There's a big red TRD badge. There are some fake vents over here on both sides of the rear bumper, which I don't like. And then you can see the taillights are a total incandescent design. You don't get the full LED taillights that you get on the upper trim Camry. So again, that's kind of a disappointment. Underneath here, you can see a rear bumper diffuser, which is super aggressive. It extends the overall length partially. And then TRD gives you a specific tuned exhaust. It's a sport exhaust. It actually sounds pretty good. I'll go ahead and fire it up so you guys can hear how it sounds. And it doesn't get much better than that for a mainstream family sedan. So I have to say that's probably the best sounding exhaust note in this particular segment. Now opening up the trunk, all Camrys have a 15.1 cubic foot trunk. The seats do not, however, fold down in the TRD because there is a, a brace back there that's uh, increasing the stiffness of this car. So again, you're losing a little bit of practicality. And you can also look underneath here where the TRD Camry does give you a temporary spare tire uh, so you don't have to deal with a fix a flat kit. So the exterior styling changes are pretty minimal from 2021, but let's go ahead and hop inside the inside of the Camry TRD. Let me first show you guys the key fob. This is Toyota's latest intelligent access key, which does come standard on the TRD. You can see the fob itself has the usual buttons. Um, you cannot remote start from the fob, but you should be able to use remote start from the Toyota Connected Services app, which I don't have access to because this is a press car. Now, as you can see, opening the door and looking at the inside, this is a specific interior color option or color and trim. Uh, for the TRD. You can see it has Toyota's soft text leatherette. It's kind of similar to the XSE or the SE, although these seats are not heated. They do have some more red accents. It's got TRD embossed in the actual headrest. And you do have an eight-way power driver's seat with two-way lumbar support. However, uh, memory seats are still not available on any Camry. It's one of the reasons why Toyota, I guess, wants you to buy an Avalon, although the Avalon is going away after this year. So I'm wondering if Toyota will finally add that feature. Now, getting inside this car, you definitely get a sense of how low it is. It is lower compared to other Camry models, but once you get inside, you can see uh, the new screen is what's going to uh, stick out because the old Camry had a screen that was actually embedded in the dash. Now it's kind of sitting on top like a tablet style. As I get in and shut the door, the door has a somewhat tinny sound to the slam. It's pretty similar to the other Toyota models on this platform. Uh, to start the vehicle up, you can see the start stop button is right here where you'd expect it to be. 
and it's super smooth when it starts up. I mean, you gotta love a Toyota uh, naturally aspirated V6. It just uh, sounds very refined when it starts up, uh, which is all gonna add to that impression of quality. Now, looking at the door panels, you can see it is a soft touch injection molded plastic, which is definitely nice. The window controls are one touch automatic for all four actually. So it's really nice to see Toyota has included that on all versions of the Camry, um, which is a nice upscale touch. You can see aluminum accented trim here for the door panels, um, a nice padded area over here, although I wish this was kind of stitched in leather. This right here feels a little bit cheap. Upper trims have actual leather stitching here, which would have been nice. Window controls are somewhat of the older Switch style. Uh, they are illuminated at night, uh, at least, which is nice. Lots of buttons over here, but you can see there are a few empty buttons because one of these would be the heated steering wheel and the 360 camera button, which again, the TRD doesn't offer that feature. Now the steering wheel you can see is not anything different for the TRD. It does have red stitching, but it's not like a flat bottom design. There's no like TRD badging on the steering wheel to show that it's special. The wheel itself is a manual tilt and telescoping. It does offer a good amount of adjustability and range. There are paddle shifters behind the wheel. You've got controls for your audio and your cruise control, Toyota safety center. 2.5 is standard and you can see the gauge display the trds get specific red illumination uh, with a very small three and a half inch lcd screen in the center keep in mind the xse and L xle uh, has the full seven inch cluster here which is not a full digital display but it certainly looks better and more upscale versus this display which just looks a little bit cheap there are three different drive modes here eco normal and sport if i it's in normal now right now if i push sport it goes to a red tint and then push eco it's still blue uh, and then normal's blue. So again, gauges look a little bit basic. I wish that Toyota had offered the full or the larger digital display in this car. The dashboard here you can see has a soft touch injection molded plastic, soft touch all the way over here. You can see piano black plastic trim. Down here it is uh, real soft text with genuine stitching, which is nice. And then there's an interesting kind of curved design here with the plastic, the piano black plastic and the gray plastic trim. Uh, this is the nine inch Toyota and uh, infotainment system. It's not their newer system. So you don't, you aren't gonna find things like over the air updates or wireless Apple CarPlay or Android Auto. So I'm gonna have to plug my phone in, which has the USB A connector over here. Uh, the screen itself is certainly larger versus the last TRD. You can still get a smaller seven inch display, but I have to say the nine inch display is definitely worth the extra $1,500 that Toyota charges. It includes the nine speaker JBL sound system, which sounds all right. It's nothing super special which mostly in this segment, you're not gonna find a super special sounding audio anyways. Put the vehicle in reverse, you can see there's your backup camera. It has trajectory parking, uh, or it has trajectory, active trajectory, um, rear cross traffic alert, but no parking sensors on this car. Uh, keep in mind, remember this is a lower trim. And then if you go here to the actual Toyota display, uh, this car does not have, or it might, nope, it doesn't have embedded GPS. So you have to use your phone, which is what most of you are going to be using anyways. You can sign, you can kind of customize this to your liking, but again, this is the older system, not the newest ones that I've tried in some of the newer Toyotas. Now over here you can see Toyota basically moved the dash vents from here where you can see that that's where they were because it's just blocked off with plastic now to down here and then you have dual zone or single zone climate control. Again, you would have dual zone climate control on the upper XSE and XLE trim. So again, this is where you're sacrificing a little for the TRD. Over here you can see um, there is a storage area over here and then no wireless phone charging pad. Again, you would have that feature on the upper trim Camrys, uh, but I like how it's kind of a two-tier storage. The TRD gets its own specific shift knob, which has TRD embossed in it. Uh, this controls the eight-speed automatic. It does have a sport mode over here or a manual mode in the actual lever itself. Uh, I like how it's very traditional, especially for those of you who prefer traditional lever. As I mentioned earlier, brake hold, electronic parking brake, cup holders over here. I like how they didn't put scratchy piano black plastic down here. This is a better material. And then this right here could be softer and it also could be uh, covered in the same soft text leatherette. This is a pretty big size storage bin, however. You've got a USB-A and a USB-C charging dongle in there, which is nice. The seats are basically the same seats in other Camrys. They don't have very aggressive bolstering, but at least they look pretty decent. And then you can see here the glove box is rel relatively big. It's deep. Uh, it's stamped but not lined with felt. Uh, over here, you can see the rearview mirror is just manual tilt and tell us, or it's manual, no auto dimming. You do have LED lighting in here, which is nice, but not very much in terms of LED accent lightings. And then there's also a sunroof holder over here. You can see no sunroof in this car at all, so you do get more headroom. Uh, but overall, you can see the interior Toyota basically just changed the way that looks. It has most of the tech that you would want, although uh, I really think that uh, Toyota is skimping on features on the TRD, especially when you consider the price tag. Looking at the back seat, you can see this is basically the same as every other Camry. You get around 38 inches of legroom, which is on the middling end of the segment. Some competitors do offer more space, but getting back here, you can see at five foot seven, this is a pretty comfortable place for somebody my height to spend time. Let me get in. 
shut the door. The materials back here are hard touch plastic, so keep that in mind. The front has better materials. Toyota skimped back here. It is padded down here where your uh, elbow would rest, and then you have more of that uh, silver painted trim. You can see TRDs also include a red seat belt, which instantly adds like five more horsepower. Uh, there are two storage pockets here, and then no rear seat air vents or heated back seats or um, USB ports, because remember, this is the lower end of the totem pole. You can see the rear seats don't have adjustable headrests, but at least they have the same kind of interesting sportier look with the two-tone or with the red contrasting stitching uh, and the red piping. No also center armrest here. That's something that you get on the upper trim. So again, Toyota is really skimping here. Uh, there is also a relatively large hump here. Uh, also considering the fact that this is a front wheel drive vehicle, I don't know why that's there. And then you can see just a incandescent bulb back here. So pretty Spartan back seat. So if you guys, again, want more features, highly recommend stepping it, stepping it up to the XSE or the XLE trim. So here we are back behind the wheel of a Toyota Camry. And this car always kind of feels like home to me. It was the very first vehicle that I drove when I got my driver's license back in high school. So I'll always kind of have a soft spot in my heart for Camrys, even though as an enthusiast, I can't help but be annoyed with this car because they are just so incredibly common. However, we are in the Camry TRD. This is the sportiest Camry that Toyota has ever offered. And I tested one back in 2020. However, Toyota has made, it, made some small changes to it, mostly cosmetic, especially on the interior. This is still the only V6 powered mainstream family sedan left in the segment. So I wanna see what this Camry is surely capable of. Um, remember, it has over 300 horsepower. It's only front wheel drive, which is interesting Interesting because Toyota does offer all wheel drive on the four cylinder Camrys, not even the hybrid, not the V6, but just the four cylinder models. And I believe this car was like zero to 60 in like around six seconds. I have never actually tested it with my camera equipment or with my timing equipment. Um, so let's go ahead and see what this Camry is capable of. Now, remember it's front wheel drive with an eight speed torque converter automatic, no limited slip diff. So it's gonna be a little tricky to launch this car, but we'll go ahead and see what we can do here. Just put my foot down. Traction control is kind of fighting the car. I didn't turn it off because I don't want too much wheel spin. Sounds good. Zero to 60 in 6.1 seconds. So it's perfectly respectable. If this car could launch harder, I imagine it could get it under the six second mark. Um, however, this model here that I'm driving doesn't have the summer tires on it. It's about 670 degrees outside, so it could it would benefit from summer tires. I just have the Michelin all season tires and they're definitely struggling for grip. I know that if I turn off the traction control and I floor it or I try brake torquing it or whatever, uh, it'll just smoke out the front tires and we won't get a very quick zero to 60 time. So when a vehicle like this, we want it to be we want the traction control to be on just because it's not gonna do anything good if I turn it off. It's just gonna make the acceleration even slower. So overall, uh, acceleration is perfectly fine. I don't think that this car obviously is going to be the quickest offering. The dual clutch in the Kia K5 GT and the Hyundai Sonata N-Line is just much more effective at putting the power down. And its turbocharged engines uh, from its competitors do offer significantly more low end grunt versus the Camry. This vehicle, you know, just driving it around, putting my foot down here, you have to rev the engine out to actually get it to accelerate. Now, the beauty about this V6 is it is smooth. It enjoys being revved. Uh, the eight speed automatic in this car, however, is, or it could use some software tweaking to make it shift a little bit more aggressively. It, it has the same software tuning as the other V6 Camrys. Put my foot down here, I leave it in sport mode. It's still fighting for traction. But you know what, it feels strong and it's also smooth and it sounds a hell of a lot better than any other of its four cylinder turbo competitors. It's just, you know, if you're coming into this review or you know trying to buy this car thinking it's a performance car, it did, it did rev match pretty well there, uh, you'll be sorely disappointed. This is still just a Camry with front wheel drive. The automatic also will automatically upshift for me if I forget to uh, actually pull the paddle. Um, and there's also two modes here. There's a sport mode and then an actual sport mode in the transmission. So it has two technically sport modes. I had it in both of its sport modes at the time when I launched the car. Uh, so yes, the vehicle itself accelerates just fine. Just make sure you're not used to driving like a real sports sedan, that it's rear wheel drive that's kind of better balanced. Uh, the steering also in this car surprisingly is quick. It just doesn't have much road feel and Toyota I did retune the suspension for the TRD model. It's got TRD specific shocks and dampers and tuning. So it definitely feels a lot stiffer uh, versus, um, you know, a regular Camry, a regular four cylinder or a V6 Camry. It just, it feels a lot better in that regard. I turned off the traction control here. And... <laughs> That's what I was telling you about. It's horrible, <laughs> but it's also kind of funny. 
Because <laughs> once it does p get the power down, it's kind of fun. Uh, but man, this car would seriously benefit if Toyota would just put all-wheel drive with the V6. I mean, they already make this combination all-wheel drive with this V6, eight-speed auto in the Toyota Highlander. It wouldn't you know, be too much trouble for them, but I guess it's just the take rate would be so low because V6 engines in general are a dying breed. These bigger engines are a dying breed as everyone moves toward turbo turbocharge, downsizing, electrification. So it, it would seem silly for Toyota to kind of offer it, but it also would be a pretty cool final hurrah uh, to this generation Camry, which is due for a replacement probably in the next two years, within the next two years. Still spinning its tires there. <laughs> But man, that's a nice sound. I do wish that the exhaust had a little bit more of like a burble and a crackle and a pop. Uh, it's not an active exhaust. It's just got reduced back pressure. It's the TRD specific exhaust. I don't know if you can get that from the dealer, uh, which is probably, which is partly one of my issues with the TRD is this is the cheapest way to get into the V6 Camry, which is nice, but you're also sorely lacking the features that you get in a V6 Camry. For example, this car that I'm driving is lacking heated seats. No heated seats, no heated steering wheel, no sunroof. You can't get that on, a, on the TRD. And also the instrument cluster here is the smaller three and a half inch display. It looks just rather cheap and dated, although I'm glad that to see Toyota has added the nine inch display uh, over here. Uh, which is definitely nice along with the JBL sound system. The seats in this car also aren't any more aggressively bolstered, so they don't hold you in place all that well. Um, this is a, a unique soft text material. It's a fake leather that Toyota uses in the TRD along with the TRD um, embossed in the actual head headrest. The brakes on this car are also an inch larger in diameter uh, and the, the calipers are also twin piston. However, I will say that the braking feel of this car doesn't feel all that impressive. I would have liked to see Toyota improve the brake feel and just give it a little bit more initial bite. It doesn't inspire much confidence when I go near the brakes on this car, uh, which is kind of the whole point of a sporty sedan. You want it to feel like it has strong brakes and this car's brakes don't feel all that strong. So that's something that perhaps the aftermarket will address. Uh, the visibility in this vehicle is still pretty much the same as every other Camry. You can see out of the front pretty well. Um, this uh, A-pillar has a pretty uh, intense slope the view out of the back is fine. That rear spoiler doesn't even in impede on my uh, rearward visibility. And all Camrys now come with their Toyota Safety Sense 2.5. So it has active lane trace, adaptive cruise control, automatic emergency braking, blind spot monitoring, rear cross traffic alert. It all works pretty well. It isn't the newest, absolute newest system that I've tried in like the BZ4X. Um, but you know, this is still a mainstream car. I don't expect it to have all of the latest and greatest in tech, but it is a strong value. It's a strong value. It's a good looking car. It handles well. The ride quality is on the firmer side, especially for a Camry. You're not going to really like like it if you're coming from an XLE or an LE Camry with how soft it is. Uh, but in my weeks worth of testing, I've been averaging around 24 MPG on regular gas in this car. On the highway, it gets about 30 miles to the gallon. So right on with the EPA numbers, but remember, the hybrid Camry gets basically double that. Um, now the hybrid Camry obviously isn't as fast, but you know when you buy the TRD model, you're expecting it to be a sportier Camry. This is definitely a sportier Camry, but it certainly is no GR Camry. This is not a Gazoo Racing Camry, and it would be cool if Toyota would do a Gazoo Racing version, a GR Camry, but I would also have to wonder what powertrain would it have? Would it have a manual? Would it have a V6 twin turbo or a turbo V6 with all wheel drive? Lots of questions are going on in my head. Um, I don't think Toyota will ever do one, but this TRD Camry for now as the sportiest Camry that Toyota has ever offered, it certainly is an enticing proposition. And if you view it as it's the cheapest way to get into a V6 Camry, the uh, price point definitely starts to make sense. So once upon a time, this used to be Toyota's best-selling model with the company moving well over 400,000 units every year. Sadly, that hasn't been the case for quite a few years. The best-selling nameplate has now gone to the Toyota RAV4. So Toyota does roughly about 300,000 Camrys in the US every year. So that number is nothing to sneeze at. This is the best-selling mainstream family sedan out there. Out there, It outsells everything from the Accord to the Altima to the K5 to the Hyundai Sonata. And this is definitely a very enticing family sedan, especially if you guys are looking for a naturally aspirated V6 and a really interesting design. I mean, this car here in particular actually attracts a lot of attention. I see a lot of Camry TRDs out on the road and that's not easy to see why because, or it's pretty easy to see why because of the wheels, because of the suspension, because of that spoiler, because of that fantastic sounding exhaust. I do wish that Toyota would offer the TRD goodies on the XSE. I kind of think that they should just make it a trim package as opposed to a trim level uh, because I don't like some of the compromises you have to make. I don't like how this car doesn't offer a sunroof. I don't like how it doesn't offer 
heated seats or a heated steering wheel or ventilated seats. You can get that on the XSE and the XLE trim. And really, uh, where this car might find some fault is the fact that it doesn't really have the acceleration to back up the sporty looks. I mean, 0 to 60 in 6.1 seconds is perfectly acceptable. There was a time where that was actually a quick number, but remember cars like the Kia K5 GT, Hyundai Sonata N-Line, and the Honda Accord 2.0-liter turbo are all faster than this vehicle because of their quicker shifting transmissions and their torque-rich turbocharged engines. Even though they don't sound as good as this car, they are more effective in putting the power down and also so making for a quicker accelerating vehicle. So I'm here, I'll be curious to see what Toyota does for the next generation. We probably won't see that V6 under the hood for the next generation model. So my advice, if you guys want something like this, you want something that's going to be reliable, that's going to last a long time, be sure to put this one at the very top of your list. Now, speaking of which, if you're looking to buy a Camry, they start at around 25,995 for the base LE. If you guys want a V6, this is the cheapest way to get a V6. These start at 32,995, about $3,000 less versus the XSE or XLE V6 Camry. Now my tester here has an upgrade to the JBL sound system and the larger nine inch display along with this two-tone paint. All in this one's about $34,500. So it's basically right around the same price as an S XSE V6 Camry, but keep in mind it is missing some of that model's specific features. I really think at this price, Toyota should have included a sunroof and at least heated seats and a heated steering wheel. But overall, it's a decent value and if you guys want that V6, it certainly is uh, worthy of taking a look. But just keep in mind, vehicles like the RAV4 uh, outsell this car because they are significantly more practical. And you can also find a faster RAV4 versus this car if you go for the Prime model, which again is the second quickest accelerating Toyota that the company makes. But with all that said, hope you guys have enjoyed my full overview on this 2022 Toyota Camry TRD. If you're also looking to see the latest cars I'm testing, be sure to follow me on Instagram at redline underscore reviews, like us on Facebook, and as always guys, please keep subscribing to the Redline Reviews YouTube channel for all the latest reviews. Thank you so much for watching. I'll catch you all in the next video.